with this video I'm going to show you how you make a batch of canadals. Now if you're a family member or relative, you either know what canadals are or you've only heard of canadals and you probably have no idea what they are or how they're made. Now if you're not a relative but you've had canadals when you were growing up and you've been searching for a canadal recipe, I hope that this is the recipe that you've been looking for. Now the canadals that we grew up with as kids were basically a ball filling cooked by dropping them in boiling water. The ingredients are the same as filling, just bread, milk, and eggs, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Now here's a batch that's already been cooked and cooled, so you can see what they look like when they're done. To make these, all you do is, after you fold the ingredients together, is form baseball-sized balls, drop them into boiling water, and that's all there is to it. There's one I cut in half, so you can see what they look like in the center. You see how dry it is? You can even see uh, the bread in there. Now believe it or not, as soon as you pull these out of the boiling water, if you cut one in half, but we dry like this in the center. And you wouldn't think so because, I mean, after all, you're just dropping a ball of bread in boiling water. You think they come out waterlogged and, and soaked, but they're not. Now, canadals are meant to be served as a side dish in place of filling of mashed potatoes because they're always served with gravy. As we were growing up, my pop would make them from time to time, and he normally served them with pork and a good pork gravy, but they go well with chicken and chicken gravy or beef and beef gravy. Now, canadals are a... a like a family tradition in our family. And the reason I put this video together is because I wanted to pass this recipe on to you if you are a, a family member or relative. So you could pass this on to your kids so the Canadian tradition stays alive in the family. And once again, if you're not a family member or relative but you've been searching for Canadian recipes, I hope this is the one that you've been looking for. For this batch of Canadians, I'm going to want five to six baseball sized Canadians. So the ingredients are three to four large eggs, one cup of warm milk, give or take, one family size loaf of bread, that holds 24 slices. If you uh, want to buy your bread cubes already cubed up, my measures it out, that comes to 15 cups of bread cubes. Now the bread must be stale, and the way my pop used to do it is he'd lay the bread out for a day or two ahead of time, then he would cube the, the bread up when it was stale, and that, that makes pretty much of a mess. Uh, it makes a lot of breadcrumbs, and that's the way I used to do it. So what I do instead is, and I learned this trick from my mother-in-law when she showed me how to make her filling, is I'll freeze the loaf first, then I'll take three pieces at a time, and to get the size bread cubes that I want is I'll make 11 or 12 slices the whole way down through this way, and 11 or 12 slices the whole way down through that way. And what that does is that gives me about the right size cubes right here. And what I do after I, as I cube the bread up, I, I put put them in, uh, this is my turkey roasting pan, it's pretty wide. So that way the bread cubes aren't stacked up too high and, and they'll stay all good for you in, in about a day or so. So, that's the, the, the ingredients. Now it's on to the making of the canadals. Time to make the canadals. Already added the salt and pepper. Four eggs well beaten. And I transferred the breadcrumbs from the pan to the, a bowl. And I do that because when I fold the eggs in, I'll be able, when I pack them down, the bread cubes will be able to pick up the moisture from the eggs better in a bowl compared to a, a large pan where they're all spread out. So uh, this is important here. When my grandmother showed me how to make these, she said you must use a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon is made for, for uh, folding ingredients together. Because we're not going to be mixing this, we're going to be folding it. Okay, so here we go. There are the four eggs. Okay, now I start folding. You can hear how nice and dry them breadcrumbs are. These things have been stale for like three days. But normally I would add three eggs and then if it needed more I'd add a fourth. But I already made a batch and I know this is going to take all four eggs. So this is how you fold. Entry, you go to the bottom, you get all the breadcrumbs off. You go back and forth. You're not stirring, because the last thing you want to do is, with these things that want to start to get, get damp, the last thing you want to do is smash everything together. This is kind of how you fold, or how you fold, you get back and forth. Make sure you get the bottom. Now this is going to take several minutes, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out, and then I'll be back when when it's done, or just about then. I'll show you what the consistency should look like. So see you here shortly. Okay, I'm done folding everything together. You see the consistency here. And as I fold, as you fold this together, if you have any, you're going to get some clumps. It's going to start clumping together. That's what you want. You just want to break the pieces up like as you go. Make sure you get the bottom because your breadcrumbs are going to settle down there. Now you notice how you can see all the bread cubes. They're still pretty much, uh, they're individual. They're sticky. You want a sticky, tacky consistency. This is what you want. Okay, you see how it is? That's the consistency that you want right there. Okay, now the next step is what I'm going to do is just pat this down. Just pat her down. And then you wait 20 minutes for the, the egg to, to soak into the bread. And you step after that. Then we, we add the milk, do the same process all over again. Okay, you can still see all the, the individual bread cubes. You know you have the consistency right when everything sticks together. If you have bread cubes like falling out and bread crumbs, you know add another egg. There's four eggs in here, so I know that's enough. Okay, that's just 20 minutes. I'll see you in 20 minutes when we add the milk. Okay, it's time to add the milk. Now what I've already done is I went ahead and loosened everything up. Everything was pr pretty tight when I started. I just went in and broke everything back up and loosened everything up again. So you see how everything's nice and loose. You see how you can see all the, the individual bread crumbs or bread cubes, I'm sorry. So that's what you want to do. You want to go in at this, this again, it'll take another three, five minutes or so. Break up all those little lumps in there. You want everything nice and loose like this. Now when you add the milk, this is one cup of warm milk, not hot, Nana told me it's got to be warm, not, not hot, so I make it warm. So when you add this in, it's one cup, you start off by about a half a cup first. You don't want to make these things too wet. If you make them too wet, they end up sinking to the bottom of the pot, and I don't know what happens then, I don't know if they come apart or what, but, and you do the same thing again. And you just, just fold. Start off with putting a half a cup in, and another quarter cup. And if you have to add the rest, then you add the rest. But I wouldn't start off with more than a cup. You probably don't need more than a cup for 24 slices of bread, which are... 15 uh, cups of bread bread cubes so okay now I'm going to cut out again here because this is uh, again going to take another several minutes to fold this together and I'll come back in and show you what the consistency should look like when it's done so I'll see you here shortly okay I'm done folding this together and this is the consistency that you're looking for now I only I added all but the, the whole cup of milk Try and give you a close shot here. See how everything's pretty well stuck together, but you can still see the the uh, the bread cubes. That's the consistency that you want. You can kind of still see the bread cubes or individual almost, but they're 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 well dampened. They're not soaked or well dampened. What you don't want is stay there, cameraman. I'm going to wet my hands here and show you. You see how you see the individual, bread, the individual bread cubes? It's too wet when you fold this stuff up. When you get, I'll kind of show you. So you can see the individual bread cubes in here yet. What you don't want is when, you, when it's too wet, it's all packed together like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. This is what you don't want. You don't want it like, like filling, like, like a wet filling. So, okay, now the next step here is, let me shut off the water. Again, 
We just pack her down. So we can pick up all that moisture. Once again, you don't want it too wet. Pack it down. And you, can, you can still see the individual, the individual bread cubes in here. It's not all mushed together. If it was too wet, it would be mushed. Everything would just be clumped together. You won't be able to see the, the individual bread cubes. That's the consistency that, consistency that you want. I'll see you in 20 minutes when it's time to form up the canadles.